Daydreamers. Dreamers. Welcome back to another episode of Big Dreams Homestead. My name is Anne Marie. If you're new to the channel, I am currently in the process of converting a 14 by 28 foot custom built shed into my forever tiny home. Just wanted to check in with you guys today and let you know that I have accepted a challenge. My sister, who also does YouTube and live videos, challenged me to upload a video every day for 90 days. Not gonna happen. But I told her I would do it at least for 30 days and then we'll revisit. Um, this will get me back into the habit of updating every day and keeping you guys informed on what's going on. Some days nothing will be going on. Um, some days little things will be going on, like boring stuff like wiring outlets, which is what I did today. And other days, there'll be more progress. So the bad news is there won't be as many uh, videos of showing you guys what I'm doing and nobody wants to see me wire a gazillion outlets. Really, there's not a gazillion in here, but it feels like it when you're doing it. Um, so you guys won't see a lot of the work because I don't have time to go through and edit all that, but you will get daily updates um, at least for the month of June. And I'll revisit it at the end of June and see if it's something I want to continue um, as we go forward with the tiny house build. Hopefully I'll be done with it sooner than later. For now, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I got done so far um, in the last couple days. And I'll just give you updates each day from now on. Okay, so let me show you what we've I've gotten done so far. Insulation. I filled most of the easy ones, the straight bays that were 16 inches on center, still have to do above and below the windows. Put in all the nail plates uh, where the wires go through the wall, except for on this wall right here, I need to go get two more. I know it's dark in here, huh? Got outlets installed. I actually stopped in the middle of this one so I could video this for you guys and get it uploaded before it's too late. If it gets too late, it gets too dark in here. But got most of the insulation in. Still need to do behind the tub surround. I just stuck the tub surround in to get it out of the electrician's way. Got to pull that back out, put the insulation in, and then actually uh, nail the tub surround in place. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I got outlets installed in the bedroom all the way around light switch for that's the three-way switch for the outdoor light and then I've got lights installed up here but no I have not flipped the breaker switch yet because I still have to do the lights up there three lights that go up along here so I need to finish that um and get it and then the outlets upstairs in the loft and I need to borrow my friend's uh, ladder to get up there to do that part. So I'll be waiting on that. But got all the nail plates in, all back behind there, um, all the, most of the insulation in. Uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to get up there and start insulating the ceiling and finish those outlets up there and I can at least do one light up there then for these other two lights I need to get a taller ladder I might be able to do that one just standing from the loft with my luck I'll probably walk off and fall <laughs> and then this one up here definitely need a ladder for that one okay so <clears throat> I know what I want to ask for those of you that do building. So my shed, they put these vents in, but finished ceiling is going to be above that, um, where that triangle is. So, and, the, and I will have baffles uh, in the ceiling joists, and then I will have um, insulation up there, and then finish off the the beams but my question is how do I get rid of that vent or do I even need to um, I mean the walls don't need to be vented and once that wall is 
finished, <laughs> you know, and I put up whatever it is I'm going to put up on the inside of the walls. So I'm thinking instead of trying to patch it from the outside and make it look good, I might just um, put a piece of plywood over the inside of it and just leave it as is. So if you have any suggestions or solutions, let me know. There's one there and there's another one in the top of the loft up there. Just below that is going to be a window, but um, I'm just wondering if I can't just put a piece of plywood over it and then wall that in. So that's basically what I've got done so far. Ins working with insulation is not fun, especially when you don't have a shower here on the premises and you have to go drive somewhere to take a shower afterwards. So um, <clears throat> can't wait to get this part done <laughs> just so I don't have to deal with it anymore. But I think that's it. For this update, I'm going to go ahead and get back to work. It's only like 4 o'clock. Just wanted to get you guys an update before it got so dark in here that you can't see anything because that's what happens when you live under the trees. And I'll get this uploaded and posted tonight. And now you can look forward to at least some kind of update every day. It won't always be on the tiny home. But I will do an update every day. Okay, I also wanted to give you guys a quick update on my mom who was sent to the hospital a couple days ago like four or five days ago now i'd have to go back and look at my phone to find out all the days are just blending together but mom was rushed to the hospital because she was vomiting blood which scares the heck out of us for those of you who don't know my mom is 80 years old and she's the reason why i'm in building this tiny home instead of my original plan was to uh, buy an RV, redo it, and travel the United States. But I decided to stay here and stay close to my mom. My mom had a stroke uh, two years ago now. Yep, almost exactly two years ago. And that scared us enough that I decided I wanted to stay here and be close to her. So she was rushed to the hospital, vomiting blood, scared us all. Uh, Turns out she was in ICU for a while because her iron was so low and she had to have blood transfusions, which caused fluid in the lungs. And um, yeah, so <clears throat> her lungs are cleared now. She's still on oxygen, but they're trying to get her off of oxygen before she comes home. So her lungs are cleared now. They found out that the bleeding was from ulcers in her stomach. So she's not bleeding anymore. And hopefully that's taken care of. So now she's just moved from ICU into a regular hospital room where they're watching over her and hopefully she'll get to come home in two or three days. So um, she's just happy today because she's no longer on liquid foods. She was on an IV. So uh, she actually got solid foods today for the first time in a few days. So I uh, just wanted to give you guys an update on that and that's going to be it for today's video. I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.